as we've been working our way through our, our introduction to Java here, there's some terms that I've used that I've never defined. Um, so I'm, I wanna tie up some of those, those loose ends. And specifically what we're really gonna focus on in this chapter is what is an object in Java? And how does it relate to a class? And what role does a variable play? Because at first glance and the stuff we've done so far, I've been throwing around these words like objects and variables um, and classes. And yeah, we know a class contains methods, but um, there's some relationship among those that, that I have certainly not made clear yet. And so that's really what I wanna focus on, on today um, as we dive, dive into it. So we're gonna scroll all the way down. So, so I guess first though, before we scroll all the way down, for example, we have a couple lines of code, like these two lines of code here were part of our template code. It has something to do with like a, a world class and a turtle class. And I've been calling these things ocean and crush variables, but yet we know objects are involved because we call methods on them. So we're gonna really dive into like what's going on with these two lines of code. But we're gonna do it in a whole nother method. So a class can contain multiple methods. So we're gonna scroll all the way down to the bottom. And between these final two closing curly brackets, we're gonna create um, a brand new method. We're not yet diving into how we really write methods and what all those identifiers are that make up the method header. So for now, just kind of go with the flow and just do public static void draw a line. And eventually we'll have a method here that can draw a line. Um, but let's dive into some of these specific terms and really unpack these statements that before we were just, that were already given to us and we were just running. So let's start with a comment block slash start enter. And I always struggle to actually come up with a definition for what an object is because an object is such a generic concept. And so I, I don't think I've come up with a good one, but the best I've got so far is objects are entities in a program. Entity is also a super generic word. So while, while I don't think that's a very good definition, I think that what's maybe more important is like, well, what does an object have? And we can get our understanding through that instead. So objects have attributes. Earlier I shared that we were creating turtle objects. And so turtles have attributes. They have a, a pen color, they have a pen width, they have a position, they have an orientation. Those are examples of attributes that, that turtles have. In addition, objects are manipulated by invoking methods. In the case of turtles, we invoked methods like forward and the turtle went forward a certain number of steps or turn left or turn right or pen up. Those are all different ways that we manipulated turtles um, by invoking, invoking methods. So while objects as entity, are entities in a program isn't particularly helpful, I think about thinking like objects have attributes, objects are manipulated by methods, that's a little bit more helpful. I've tried to be very careful with my language. And so if, we, if I scroll back up to here where we wrote previous, this previous code and we had these two lines with ocean and crush, I tried to um, choose my words carefully and say things like, and I'm gonna type that here in the previous method, ocean and crush are variables that reference, reference objects. Ocean and crush are not objects. Sometimes I may misspeak and call them objects. Sometimes you might misspeak and call them objects. Sometimes we'll read like online educational stuff and they'll definitely get that confused. Um, but they're not, they're variables. And so the reason why I wanna be explicit about this now is it's really important today that we walk away with a clear understanding of what is an object? <clears throat> how is it related to, but yet different than a class? And how is it related to, but yet different than a variable? Um, and so I wanna be clear about that up front. 
We will dive into what a variable is shortly. Let's focus on classes first. Classes describe, describe a collection of objects. I kind of like that definition. This one might work better for you. A class is a template for objects. The idea being that if you have a class, you can build a whole bunch of objects based on that class. So objects that come from the same class have certain things in common. All objects of a class have the same behavior. What I mean by that is they have the same methods. All objects of the turtle class can move forward, can turn left, can pick the pen up. And they have the same type of attributes. All objects of the turtle class have a pen color, have a pen width, have a location, have an orientation. They have the same type of attributes. And this is the really, really important thing though, but they may have different values for those attributes. That is critically important. So while all turtle objects have the same attributes, pen color, pen width, location, orientation, different turtle objects can have different values. One turtle object can have a red pen, another can have a green pen. One can be facing north, one can be facing west. One can have a pen width of five pixels, one can have a pen width of one pixel, okay? Different objects can have different values for those shared attributes. That's really powerful. In those two lines of code that we keep focusing on, I'll zip up there again just so I can point at it and I'll come back down. World and turtle here, these are our classes that are related to the objects that we're creating. Again, we have our syntax clue that they start with that capital letter to help us know that world and turtle are classes. So let's, we'll throw this in for completeness. World and turtle are classes. We will, in a, in a future chapter, we will study something focused on the um, how variables are scoped, meaning where they can be used and not used. Um, as it turns out in Java, these variables up here that we made, ocean and crush, can only be used within this main method. So if we want to have an ocean and a crush variable down in this new method, we need to like create it again. So let's do that because then it also means I can stop scrolling all the way to the top as we un unpack this. So we're gonna have the exact same two lines of code as we have up above. I suppose you can copy those two lines if you want. And I'm gonna add a comment block between the two of them because we're gonna unpack every identifier in this line of code here that says turtle crush equals new turtle ocean. And we're gonna focus on the everything to the right of the equal sign first, and then we'll look at stuff to the left. Because what you may have already inferred here is this line of code somehow creates a new object. It makes a new turtle, okay? We saw it pop up on the screen when we ran the demo over a week ago now. Um, so let's figure out how exactly we do that. At the heart of making this work is the special keyword new. So we use the new operator We're using the word operator in computer science, just like you use it in, in math. Um, so an operator has operands and it performs some sort of an operation and it returns a value, right? The operators with which you are familiar are like addition, subtraction, multiplication, division. All of those show up in Java too. That's the good news. They're all the same. 
But in computer science, we have many other types of operators as well, one of which is kind of odd because it's a word. Um, it's the new operator. The new operator takes an operand, which is this class and extra stuff here, and it returns a value when it makes a new object. So we use the new operator to construct. Um, the word construct is the same as like create um, or instantiate is a word you'll see. I'm gonna use construct because it, it reinforces some of our key Java concepts. So we use the new operator to construct an object. So we gotta have the word new here. The class of the object, remember classes are like, a class is a template for objects. So the class of the object is specified immediately after the new operator. In this case, it was turtle. So here's the new operator, and here's the class of the object we wanna make new, a new object from. So new turtle, I wanna make a new turtle. That actually reads pretty well. I think Java did well with this. Sometimes that's all we need. Like in the previous line of code here, new world. I wanna make a new world, done. Sometimes, however, if we need to pass additional information to construct the object, arguments are specified in parentheses, 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 after the class. In this case, ocean. When we make a new turtle, it turns out we can't just make a new turtle. We got to say where, what world is the turtle going to live in? Oh, okay. Well, we want to make a new turtle and we want it to live in um, the world referenced by this variable ocean. Cool. This may seem familiar to when we're talking about methods. When we said we were invoking methods on an object, if additional information needed to be specified, those arguments were put in parentheses after the name of the method. This is essentially the same idea. If there is no additional information, we still need the parentheses and we still need the semicolon at the end of the statement. If there is additional information inside the parentheses, semicolon at the end of the statement. So this does a decent job of explaining everything to the right of the equal sign in terms of creating the new object. But we haven't yet talked about anything to the left of the equal sign in any details. And this is where we now finally can tie up this loose end of like, what is a variable anyway? So we'll do another slash star comment block and we'll say super powerful concept here. Variables store values to be used later. This is not a new concept for any of you. From the very first time you started thinking about and learning about algebra and math class, and you had x equals seven, you had the concept of a variable, and that variable could have a value, and that value could change. We don't normally think of it that way, but this idea of a variable and the concept of algebra or the concept of a variable in a programming language, it's an example of abstraction. It's that computational pillar of abstraction. Um, it's really, really powerful. In Java, there are some rules about variables. and These rules are different than they were in Python. In Java, variables have a type and have to have a type, and that type has to be declared. What do I mean by a type? A variable type could be um, like an int. An int is, a, is what we call a primitive type. It's like we can store the number seven in there, okay? Um, or if a variable doesn't have a primitive type, it has a class type, like turtle. So if crush is our variable, its type is the turtle class. It's a class type. A variable also needs a name. For example, I could call my variable width, 
or up here I called my variable crush. And the variable eventually has to have a value. If it's an if its type is that of an integer, its value could be like 20. If its type is that of a class type, what is its value? That's a question worth exploring. What is the value of the variable crush here? We're gonna focus on that a lot today. Before we get into that, let's have some examples here in our code. Let's declare a variable. And I use the word declare. The first time we use the name of a variable, we declare it. And when we declare it, we specify its type, but only the first time. So I say int with semicolon. This is me declaring, declaring a variable. So I'm declaring it of type int. In Python, you can leave off the type. Python will figure it out, right? Java, we can't do that. Got to specify the type. At some point, I need to assign a value to this variable, width equals 20. This is assigning a value to a variable. Yeah. Is there a performance difference between like not assigning it in my phone and assigning it? Between not assigning it and assigning it, you said? Or like A type? Yeah, the type. Um, yeah, a little bit, probably. Probably doesn't really matter that much, but a little bit, yeah, because it's very dynamic. Um, this line of code, I dramatically under, when I started teaching computer science, I dramatically underestimated that this line of code with equals 20 can be really problematic. And it wasn't until I talked to a lot of students that I kind of figured out why that was. Um, just, and, and really it's just cause I forgot what it was like to be in high school and to take math classes. Um, the equal sign in math represents equality, right? When you, when you're doing algebra, the equal sign says the thing on the left is equal to the thing on the right. And you manipulate your expressions and you solve for variables and stuff. And, and that's super cool. Um, in Java, this doesn't mean equality. So it's unfortunate that we use such a familiar symbol in such a different way. In Java, as in Python, but not in all programming languages, we use the equal sign to means um, as the assignment operator. The assignment operator says, take the value of the thing on the right and assign it to the thing on the left. So not only are we using a very familiar symbol in a different way to mean assignment instead of equality, we're also kind of going from right to left, and that's confusing because we read from left to right, in English at least. Um, and so it's really easy to get mixed up about these assignment statements. So I will say out loud a lot to reinforce it as we're learning this. Whenever I come across this assignment operator, I'll be like, take the value of the thing on the right, make a copy and store it in the thing on the left. And I'll just say it over and over again till we get comfortable with it. Eventually, you won't think twice about this, but it just takes some time to kind of get used to seeing something unfamiliar like this. So just a, an important clarification there. Let's do one more example. We don't have to declare and then assign on a different line. We can do it all together. I can create a variable called x position of type int, and I can immediately assign it a value of 50. <coughs> and that's declaring and assigning a value to a variable. Cool. We still haven't answered, and we will, well, what is the value stored in the variable crush? We're kind of working our way up to that. But before we do that, one other loose end I want to tie up is I've been using this primitive type int and referring to primitive types and we haven't defined that yet either. So that's the final definition I want for us for today before we dive into this variable crush. So Java has several 
primitive data types. So as I said, every variable in Java is either a class type, a turtle, a world, a rectangle, a random, a string, or it's a primitive data type. Um, these are just like normal values. Um, there are several. The AP curriculum says we only have to know three of them. So we'll focus on those three plus one more that's really convenient. And then we'll study them all later um, just for completeness. But for today, let's focus on the Boolean. A Boolean holds a value of true or false. And we'll add an example of that down below. Here is a Boolean. So the type is Boolean. The variable name is, is summer and it's still summer. But we could also assign it false, you know, when it becomes fall. So Boolean is one type, true or false. Um, notice that when we assign it a value of true or false, it's all lowercase. So that's a, a small change from Python. Int. Int is short for integer. An int type holds an integer value or an integer number, I'm going to say. By an integer number, I mean like a whole number, right? Like 7, 23, negative 55. We have examples of like an integers right up here. What if we want a fractional part? What if we want like a, a, a decimal? Um, we use a double. The double type holds a real number. And I mean real in the mathematical sense of real. Um, in computer science, in terms of like the spec, the standard, that's a floating point value. So that's what double is. So let's add an example of a double. Here is a double. So we start with the word double. Notice our primitive data types. Those words show up in red in BlueJay because they are reserved words. Sales tax rate. 0 0.0775, I think. Um, these are the only three you will ever see on an AP exam. Boolean, int, double, that's it. All the primitive types. We will from time to time use a char, which is short for character, and it holds a single character. It is not a string, it holds literally one single character. So here is a char, char letter equals C. When we're trying to specify a specific character, like literally the letter C, we will put it in single quotes. So single quotes for single characters. We're gonna use double quotes later for strings. Java doesn't let you mix the two at all. So here is a char. Give me, I'm gonna leave this, switch my windows real quick here. 